Now we are at the phase of testing what we already implemented. So for that, I asked ChatGPT, I gave it this structure, and I asked it to generate 100 students respecting first name, last name, and age, and generating some random information. So I will paste the data right here. So this is what we can see. We have these students right here. Now, all I need to do is to go ahead and run the application. So let me make it full screen. And now we see that the application is up and running. And before that, I want to go to my database and refresh it and see how tables are created. So first we see here that we have seven tables instead of one. Even we created only one entity in our application. But if we go here, we see that we have six tables related to spring batch. So we have the batch job execution, context content, context param, instance execution, and execution context. So maybe let me open the diagram for you and I'm gonna make it full screen. So here we see that we have the following structure and here we have the batch job instance has job execution and the job execution has a batch execution context and parameters as well as batch step execution and the batch step execution has a context. So you can have a closer look at these different tables. Now what we want to do is to run our application. So we need to invoke our endpoint. And for that, I would simply go ahead and create an HTTP file that will simply make or perform a post mapping or a post call to my REST API. So here I will just right click and create an HTTP request file and I will call it just demo. So for that, all I need to do is to do post and then localhost and my port is 9090 and then slash students. All right, so this is the endpoint we just created. Now, when I run this one, I expect to have 100 students in my table. So for now, my table is empty. And when I run this one, I expect that we import 100 student. So also I will clear the console here so we will see the execution time of this. So now if I run it and then I go back here, we see here that the job has been executed or the step CSV import executed in 189 milliseconds. So this, this is super, super fast. All right. So now if I again refresh my table, I see that I have the 100 student already imported in here. So let me maybe organize this one. So you see here that we have these students. All right. So Next, what we want to do, we want to multiply the number of users that we already created. So I will go back here and this one, I will multiply, multiply it so many times just to have, for example, 100,000 students. All right. So here, as you can see, we have 100,000 students. So you see the number of the lines right here. So we don't care about the IDs because it is already auto-generated and it will be auto-generated by Spring. So let me restart the application because we need to restart the application in order to load the new content of the file. So the application is up and running. Let me clean this and let me also double check that the student is empty. All right. So now if I run again this endpoint, let's see what will happen. So first you see that it's still spinning. So it's running and this is going to take some time, maybe seconds, maybe minutes, depending on the machine where you are running this import. But let's wait and see how long it will take to import 1000 student sorry, 100,000 students. So here it's done. And if I go back and check the output, so it took 20 seconds to import 100,000 students. And now if I check again, we see here that we have so many students. All right. All right. So here we see that we only have 100 students because we are reading the ID from the CSV file and Hibernate will automatically update. So let's do some changes and retest again. So now we can do it in two different ways. So whether we can remove the ID column from the CSV file, which will be a long thing to do, but the easiest step is to go to the student processor. And what I want 
to do here, I want to say student.setID and I will set the ID to null. So because when we pass a null ID value, Hibernate will automatically persist or create a new entry in our database. So in this way, you see here that even we are processing or we are doing some logic in here. So I will restart the application and then let's try to import again. So let me clean this one. Also, let's make sure that the list of student is empty again. And now let's run the endpoint and wait for around 20 seconds to finish processing all this data. And then I will absolutely show you how to improve the performance of your spring batch processing because we need to reduce this 20 seconds because imagine importing a file or uploading a file containing millions of records. So 20 seconds for 100,000 is not acceptable. All right, so it's about to be done. And even I can show the, the log right here. Once it's done, it will log the execution time. So now maybe it will take more than 20 seconds. Also, as you can see, since we have a longer process and we have something different and we are persisting always, so it's not just an update, it's a creation or insertion into the database. So the execution is taken a bit longer. So we need to improve that absolutely. So here, as you can see, every time I refresh the data, we see that we have new data is getting persisted. And here, so for example, it's 91,000. And if I move on and refresh again, so it's still persisting the data. So it's taking some time and we need absolutely to improve that. And there are so many ways of improvements in order to improve the processing. All right, so importing 100,000 students, like simple data, nothing is complicated, took six minutes, 35 seconds. So now let's see how we can improve that. So now in order to improve the import and the batch processing, what we can do in our batch configuration and for this step, we can define something or an object called task executor. So task executor will help us and allow us to define how many parallel threads we want to execute for our step. So first let's define a bin of type task executor. So here I will type public and then task executor and I will call it task executor. And then what I will be using. So I will use an object of type simple async task executor and I will call it async task executor, new async task executor. After that, what we can say, so async task executor set concurrency limit. So how many threads we want to run and then let's return our async task executor and let's understand what is this. So if we go to the official documentation, so this sets the maximum number of parallel task executions allowed. So the default is minus one indicates no concurrency limit at all. So when we imported our CSV file the first time, it was using only one task. And just to make sure here, this the value of this concurrent limit, as you can see here, it's set to unbounded concurrency and this one equals already minus one. So we have no parallel threads running. And now after defining this task executor, so here on the step level, we can define task executor and we can pass our task executor bin. Also something important, you need to be careful about this. You need also to take care about the resources and the power of your machine where you are executing this batch processing. So now let's restart again our application and let's run the import again. So the application is up and running and now I will open my demo file or my HTTP file and I will just run this one again. So let's see how much this will improve the import and how long it will take. All right, so the file has been totally processed. Now let's check how long this one took. All right, so here we see that it took 36, 36 seconds instead of six minutes, 35 seconds. So you see now the difference by just implementing or by just allowing or having 10 threads running. You can increase this one to 30, for example, or a different number and check the difference. 
Now I want also to show you some other way of improving and this also might improve a little bit our processing. So let me make this one full screen. And as you can see here, we have this chunk. So the chunk, we have 10 records per thread. We can, for example, improve or like we can make this one 1000 and rerun the application again and see. But first let's double check that we have all the 1000 100,000 students in our database. As you can see here, we have all of them. So now by also increasing the chunk size, let's restart the application and see if this is gonna also improve the batch processing of our file. So here the application is up and running and I will again start importing and see how long this is gonna take. All right, so the import is done. Now let's go and check how long it took so now we see now it took only 29 seconds so we also improved it by six seconds and believe me six seconds in a production or in a highly scalable application and on a high demand application this really counts all right so we saw how we can improve our batch processing also we can improve it using partitions and this is something we will see next